Hello, can you hear me? Is my audio working? Yep, I can hear you now. I ha I my um I was muted, so I was having troubles there. Um Does my video work too or no? Um it doesn't seem to, but that's okay cuz we don't normally use video for this. Oh, okay. Sure. So, no problem. We will uh wait a few minutes uh to see uh if other folks come. Trying to figure out if there's a way to turn off your video because, well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, how's everyone doing? Hauke, can you hear us yet? It's quiet. Oh, too quiet. Yes. I'm like, did did the audio drop out? What's going on? Oh, technology. Uh, we'll wait for Hauke. He usually calls in with a separate line for his audio. Sure. So. So did you ever get any information on or my last email from you? You were trying to yes. get some data sheet or something. Yeah, that is that never happened. I uh, um, I assume for that one we're going to. Uh, oh, Hauke's in a call right now. Um, yeah, we can we can talk about it a little bit. For that, we're probably just going to have to verify people before they join. Um, we're not going to allow it to be completely open in that case. If if we can find a device where it's completely um, oh, there's your video sort of. Uh, if there's a way to um, limit it. To um, to prevent the bootloader from being overwritten, if there's a device we can find like that, then I think that's practically could be opened up to everyone. Mm. But until until we have that, it, it just isn't. I don't think practical. I see. It, it's just too dangerous. Although, do do you have like do you know where we could have instructions for if something does happen to the bootloader, how to get it back? Like, I mean, I am not too familiar with that. Uh that unfortunately <laughs> okay we'll we'll try I'll, I'll see if if kathy can get it and while she's still there um but yeah hmm. all right we have two more folks hello anton and, and paul hi hi there how you doing not too bad i've been meaning to join this meeting uh for a couple of weeks now so thanks for for moving the time for us over the pond. Yeah, no problem. It it, it works out well, it looks like, for everyone. We're getting more people, and um, I think it's for the best long term. Awesome. Uh, I don't know if you want me to give a quick introduction, uh, or whether you want to wait for people to join. Uh, I was going to wait for Hauke. He said he was on a different call, and he said he'd be able to join soon. If I think we'll just wait a couple more minutes. Uh, since Hauke is a regular participant. Um, no worries. Yeah. But but we are very glad that, that this is working better for folks. This is uh this is good. Yeah, it's a better time, I think. That's good. Very good. Hi everyone. It's uh, Anton from Imagination. Hey there, Anton. Hello. Thank you for joining quick uh, a round through who was on the call but uh, Jose might join me in a few minutes as well he'll, he'll try and step in awesome that'd be great that'd be great I think, I think we've we'll... got Paul on the line this week as well I see Paul's uh, yep. on the list yes indeed absolutely um, when I stepped out did you did you uh, do a quick intro Paul because you weren't this is your first call uh, isn't it yeah, Eric just sent. Uh, we're waiting for a couple more people, one more person, then. Yeah. Apologies, that's what I missed. No problem. We'll wait probably about one more minute. If you can't make it, we'll just we'll just go ahead and um, without him. It's not a huge deal. Just uh, he said he was on a different call and he's going to be able to join soon. So, um, well, it's 11:05 my time, so I guess we can get started probably. And and when Hauke comes in, um, he can you know introduce himself and. And whatnot, but uh, Hauke, he is uh, one of the core team members on 
uh, OpenWRT and he works at Lantique or it, whatever it's called now with Intel. So, um, anyways, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, very much appreciate you making this meeting. I'm glad that we're getting lots of participation. This time seems to be really working well. Um, we can do introductions since uh, I would assume um, some a lot of us don't know each other. Uh, I can start myself. Uh, I'm Eric Schultz. I'm a community manager at Purple. I'm also um, contracted to work on some work related to the OpenWRT uh, board co-op concept to uh, improve uh, testing to allow uh, developers to remotely access routers that they may not have access to and, and uh, you know, install new images and things like that. So um, so that's kind of it for me as the my introduction. And uh, we'll go next to Anton. Anton, you muted. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it may I'm working for Imagination Technologies. Uh, it's fairly early days. This is the second call I've joined, and um, I'm hoping to sort of um, learn uh, more about what's uh, going on in this call. And uh, my context is um, I'm helping to look at how we open source software um, for some of our projects here at Imagination and put uh, some processes in place. Um, some of this is around sort of governance for how we publish software as open source. And I'm also very interested in understanding more about um, how OpenWRT upstreaming and things like that work. Um, well, that's great. Thank you very much, Anton. We're, I'm sure we can, we can talk about that um, a lot in this call. Uh, Hauke is not here right now. So uh, Paul, we'll go to you next. Sure. Um, I'm also from Imagination. I uh, actually work in the same department as Anton, which is a systems department uh, at Imagination. We sort of deal with all the various IP that comes through the company. Uh, myself, I am an assurance manager for the systems team, and that means that um, I manage a team of uh, engineers who are bringing up our automation framework. Um, oh. I suspect that Jeremy or maybe Jose or Anton have already mentioned in previous meetings uh, that we have a creator project mm -hmm. um, and that uses OpenWRT. I'm very keen to make sure that uh, we assure that properly. And I think uh, Board Farm and, and these sort of meetings will certainly help us do that. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. No worries. Yeah. Mike? I'm uh, Mike Anderson. I'm a software developer at uh, Qualcomm and I me and a few other people here worked on automated testing of OpenWRT-based builds and OpenWRT packages, um, and through Eric, trying to, I guess, help make a public version of this. That's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Um, well, uh, for for everybody, uh, Hauke hasn't made it yet, so we will uh, we'll, we'll move forward. Um, for for those who are new to this call, these tend to be pretty. Um, we don't have too much of an agenda, although I mean we could do that in the future. It it tends to be pretty much uh, discussion, very free flowing, just kind of talking about what you're working on with uh, OpenWRT or anything that's interesting to you. Um, and uh, we can also talk about any projects that the that the uh, uh, the peg is doing. Um, we're very flexible, so I mean, we can certainly take on new projects as well um, if we have, you know, you know, a, a facility to do it or um, or the resources. So um, we're very we're very open in that respect. Um, so I mean, how did people think we just kind of go around and kind of talk about what's what what you you know what you're doing in OpenWRT, if anything, and what what you want to talk about? That seems fine to me. If it's okay with everyone else. Sure. Awesome. Well, uh, Anton, do you have anything in particular? Yeah, I um, I was interested uh, in, I guess, asking uh, for some advice and perhaps a point in the right direction. Um, Paul mentioned the Creator Project briefly, and um, I believe Jeremy introduced that a couple of weeks back. Um, so something. Um, 
that we are working on at the moment. And uh, we are looking to um, prepare our source repositories um, uh, and source code in, in a, an upstreamable sort of friendly way. Now, there, there are uh, some guidelines out there uh, as to how to go about creating patches and maximizing uh, chances of these patches being accepted. By the, you know, by the people who may be able to uh, help um, us kind of validate our approach and just sort of streamline this process. Okay, uh, you uh, you cut out a little bit there, Anton, but um, I, I you know. One thing that that I've that we've heard from the the core team has been said a lot is very much uh, patching as early sending in patches as early as possible. Um, it seems to lead to uh, more reliable results and actually getting things merged. Um, I, I don't beyond that. I'm not really sure. I mean, do you have any? It's good to not put large patches at once because those they tend to it's just too difficult for the core team to to review them and they they tend to not like that very much. I know that. Um, yeah, um, I have I have heard similar things and read similar things, and I and I don't want to sort of drag everyone through what I can go and find myself online. It was perhaps more a case of um, are there any people which uh any maintainers to actually get in touch with directly or is the only way to see whether our patches are going to make it through literally to submit them and go from there is uh, is there anyone that we could get in touch with that might help us uh, in in the early days while we understand more about how to go about um uh, getting these patches upstream that's an interesting concept that I had not thought of. It, almost like a um, since since you know you're not submitting them, you're, pr you're relatively new to submitting them or whatnot to get kind of like a a verification: is this totally off or is this in the right direction? And are we going? Are we doing this right? Um, I'm not sure yeah. offhand. Um, I will email some people. Um, uh, let me just write this down. Um, there, I mean, I, I, we, we work with people on the core team, but in and they and they participate. But whether they, um, I don't know if they'd have time to do something like that, or you know, in some cases, whether they're even. Uh, would be able to provide that much help because particularly if it's related to say to MIPS, they may be like, well, I, I don't know MIPS. I can look generally, does the code look okay? But um, like, you know, kind of more general stuff. Do you, who maintains the, um, do we know who maintains the MIPS, uh, the, the various architectures and um, platforms in OpenWRT? Um. I guess the only yeah the only thing I can offer there is um, I've spoken to uh, some of the, the the MIPS guys up in our Leeds office mm -hmm. and um, I know that they have someone that works I think effectively works for imagination um, but didn't used to and okay. uh, th this this has obviously helped with our ability to to get things upstream in, mm -hmm. in the context of what they're doing. And it's kind of being put in, in touch with the right people, I guess. Uh, and my request was really, is there anyone we might actually get in touch with which would help us uh, in the early days just to, to make sure we are approaching things correctly? Uh, or is the standard procedure the best one to follow? And that is just, as you've said, submit them early, keep them small and, and um, and just go from there. That that does seem to be the general recommendation, but I think that's an interesting concept to actually discuss with some of the um, the core team members, is whether there is a whether there's there's a way to actually have people kind of get reviewed first to just as they get started kind of thing. 
But I think right now, the kind of general recommendation is to start early and just send patches to the list and, and justify them. I mean, you know, if there's, don't put stuff in there that's hard to justify and things like that, so. Sure, of course, we, we will do that. That's, that's our intention. Um, but, you know, if, if anything uh, else uh, is available as an option to, mm -hmm. to help with that process, then I'd be very interested in, in hearing about that. Okay. That I was really my, my only... <laughs> my... Anton, you, you cut out a little bit, but... Um, Apologies. I... No I, I just said that was my that was my main question for today. Thank you. No, yeah. I what I will do is I'll actually email um I'll email the maintainers let the the core team list and just ask them cuz I mean if you've had this question it it seems like it's the kind of question that that should have been should already have been answered but I'm I don't know the answer to it. So maybe this is already done and we don't know about it or or things along those lines. So We'll figure that out. Cheers. Okay, no problem. Um, Paul, do you have anything you want to discuss? Yeah, hi. Um, I, uh, I actually caught the first meeting on YouTube. I noticed you uploaded that. Um, and uh, since I haven't been to the other two, I did get a small update from Jeremy. Um, but you were talking about distributed testing. Um, yep. and how to make sure that OpenWT will be compatible with the various different types of hardware. Yep. Um, where did we end up with that? I, that, I was, yeah, I was going to talk about that in my part, but I can, I can do that now. Um, that was my main question too. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, uh, we, I have all the, um, all the, uh, just a second. I had a, um, something come up quick. Um, so we are in the process, I'm actually of setting up all the all the devices. Um, I have them pretty much all here at uh, my co-working space. Uh, I'm going to actually be putting them, all hooking them up. I've done some, some basic uh, stuff to get started. Mike and I kind of have to talk about, you know, what do we need to get on all these um, particular devices um, to actually get started. Uh, it, but I mean, I, I think this is like maybe a week or two from actually being able to have somebody try to log in remotely and see how it works. Now, th now the question then becomes, uh, how do we actually um, market it in a sense? Because because we want to make it available to other people. Um, obviously outside of purple because it's not really that really that useful to us it's how do we how do we get that access to the to the various core team members um, but uh, it, it, it's it's moving forward um, and Can I ask what kind of uh, router you uh, got we we had I uh, Kathy sent me a bunch of them um, and they're mostly development boards Um the one that I have, I don't have it on me. Um, what the, what it is offhand. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd have to find it later. Um, but it, it it's one of the, it's one of the development boards that that Qualcomm's using. Okay, um, I wasn't sure if it was like a MIPS based uh, not... router or uh, something else. I I honestly I don't know. I it, I would. It's probably MIP space, but I, I honestly don't know. Um, so uh, the the goal is, you know, once we get that started, we actually start to move out. And my my kind of initial plan is for actually maintaining this, since it seems to be uh, I've heard lots of good things about it, and it seems to be pretty uh, easy to use. Is using something like Ansible um, because it allows us to to easily manage a bunch of different things and get it into a set state that uh, uh, should work pretty well. So I, I don't know how okay. good of an answer that is. It, honestly, yeah, I mean, it's like we're moving forward, but we haven't got to. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, it was probably less of a, um, of a, you know, uh, schedule thing and more of a, cause I think in the first meeting, there was some discussion about whether we should just jump straight into distributed uh, uh, yeah. test setup, or whether we should have some sort of core test setup 
uh, you know, held somewhere. And I guess you've taken that route to start with anyway. Yeah, that, that seemed to be the, there seemed to be a, uh, a lot of concern, particularly about the distributed in the sense of the, um, like, I, I, I know, um, at Qualcomm, there was some concern, like, you know, to dealing with like firewalls and security mm. policies and like, well, we can't put it behind our firewall. Well, where would we put it then? And um, I, I would assume there would, well, you know, I don't know if Imagination has the same same security concerns. I, I assume your security people would not be um, yep. <laughs> excited at the idea. Um, so it, I, those kind of things may require a long-term kind of negotiation, or it may just simply be impossible. Uh, in this case, we're doing it at my uh, the co-working space I work at. We have we have fiber internet access. It's um, there's no uh, vital security issues, and um, that I'm where I work. So I mean, it, it, I think it's I think it's a good place to start, but. I'm very clearly the entire design is, um, and the reason I'm using Ansible is it's easy to put into something like Git or GitHub, is sure. that it's very easy to scale, and I want this to be entirely repeatable. I want this so you know if you want to do this, uh, you know, a company wants to do it internally, they can do it exactly this way. They can do it their own way, um, and also if companies want to make remote access, they can do that. If you want, if you know, there's a um, a group in in some other country that they're like, no, we want to do it. We want to do it our own way, but we want to build it internally. You can do that. Um, so this this is intended to be entirely repeatable as much as we possibly can, um, mm -hmm. and is going to be. I, I you know I'm I'm starting working through like you know what does actually need to be done so that we we get all these steps recorded and as much as possible automated. Okay, uh, so and, and I apologize if I'm going through old topics here but no the setup the setup initially how would how would that look in terms of what hardware are you, are you getting a various set of sets of hardware to, to run tests through or just one or how does it work uh, right now we have um just uh, uh kathy from qualcomm sent sent me um a set of uh some development boards that she had uh -huh. she had had saved that that they were they wanted to get access to and each development board is going to have a uh it's going to have an upstream device which is and a downstream device which is a raspberry pi um because they're simply so cheap and and, the, and they're well supported um and then there's also gonna be a raspberry pi that uh kind of is in control that connects to a uh, to the router via serial port sure. um and that is kind of the the thing that you log you log into that and that that gives you access kind of to the to the upstream and downstream device as well as a power switch that can be used for like power cycling and mm -hmm. and things like that um so it's all using you know off the shelf hardware there's there's nothing custom there and um i think once we get the first device up we're going to you know maybe learn a couple things learn mm -hmm. what needs to be needs to be done and then we can start expanding yeah, and Mike Mike gives an example, and, and we're basing that almost entirely off of um, their simple board farm uh, that they they show there. Um, okay. And 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 as as said, we are using the QCA board farm stuff. So, and Mike is okay. is uh, very much involved in this. And I should say that it was sort of modeled after the like the closed source, very expensive uh, network testing equipment that you can get from places like uh, Ixia, Chariot and uh, some other networking testing things that are like $100,000 um, if you want to test a router. But all they're really doing is it's kind of just like a server and it has some virtual machines inside. And this is just sort of a, a real physical version of, of that kind of setup. Right, okay, great. One of the things I think once we get the prototype done um, and, and we start to see some of the see how this works and we you know maybe then get firm up a little more funding and, and long-term funding is is getting a server to do this so we can actually do the various instead of having you know three raspberry pis having that done in, in a virtual machine in virtual machines because there's a lot of advantages to that but mm -hmm. uh to get started this is this is uh really straight straightforward okay great i mean uh I am over in uh, with my team in India next mm -hmm. week, uh, and one of my engineers has been looking at setting up board farm just for our CI40 and creator work mm -hmm. uh, for our own little test bed. Yeah. Um, so I suspect I'll have a few more questions maybe next week, but uh, for me, that's probably it this week.
Awesome. Yeah, I, I, Mike, uh, we'd love if you could be here certainly next week to, to help them with any discussion on that. Sure, um, sure. And I can answer any questions, uh, especially over email or, or just chat yeah. or something. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's the that's the big thing, um, big thing there. But um, I, I think uh, hopefully this goes well, and then we can quickly start expanding and, and have it in either one place or, or multiple places, but start to get obviously non QCA devices from things places like, you know, obviously imagination or Lantique or whoever, um, whoever's a member of purple. And then uh, I also need to get some sort of web interface so that people can submit their um, their, I'm thinking that they would submit their public keys so that we they have actually have access to the to the controlling uh, machine to log in. Um, but I have to talk a little bit with Mike about how we can go about doing that and what the what the kind of process should be. So sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um Hauke, do you um anything uh that you you've been doing with OpenWRT or you wanna wanna talk about? Uh not really. I'm doing yeah, some stuff at some place, some parts, not not really, nothing important. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, now that Hauke's here, Anton, would you like to ask your question about that? Um, Hauke, since he's part of the core team, might have a better answer than I did. Sure. Hi. Uh, um, my, my question earlier was, uh, at Imagination, we... Um, are working on a uh, creator uh, related project uh, which Jeremy introduced a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if you're on the call. Uh, a CR40 board, um, uh, as it's called, and it's going to run OpenWRT. Um, we're in the process of sort of organizing our source code uh, in a way which will be, um, you know, upstreamable and, and, and uh, sort of uh, friendly in terms of um, patches to be upstream to open WRT. Uh, because we've not done a great deal of this before, I, I was wondering whether there were any contacts um, who are aware that we have the standard guidance out there, which we can follow and we will follow. Um, but it was really a request for whether there was someone to talk to. Um, well, some people are doing consulting work on OpenWRT, so you can ask them. I think the easiest way is if you, uh, so if you want to submit your patches, it's, so we have a similar process the Linux kernel uses. Um, so there's a document on which describes on uh, how to submit a patch. It's, uh, I think, stolen from the Linux kernel and uh, a little bit modified. Um, if you need some consulting work, you can probably ask on the internal OpenWRT uh, mailing list. Uh, it's hackers. Uh, I don't know exactly. Uh, I can look it up and send it in the chat. Um, Oh, what was what are you exactly searching for? So do you want? So uh, on the other side, you can also ask on the uh, development mailing list uh, all sorts of questions, and uh, probably someone will help you. This this when you have some special problems. So uh, the. Um, Oh, no, I have it. So this is the internal mailing list. Uh, which, this is not public, so this where you can reach the uh, core developers. Yeah. Do you see it in the chat? Uh, yeah, I do. Thank you. Okay, I've got that. Yeah. So that's on the internal mailing list. Yeah. Okay. I... Thanks very much. I did. I get your question right. So that's, that's the other problem. So at least the, uh, your voice was sometime was. All, I haven't heard everything. I think I haven't heard everything of your question. So I hope I answered it correctly. And yeah, yeah. It was really just a request about whether there was 
uh, someone to contact as opposed to just following the, the documented process. Um, but that's fine. We, we, will, um, we will start to submit patches as soon as we can. Um, as Eric has uh, advised, you know, as early as possible, uh, and we'll follow all the documented guidelines. Yeah. How, how, okay. That, yeah, go on, Alex. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of, Anton reminded me, though, uh, or made me think of this, is maybe this is something, I, I mean, obviously all the core team members have tons of work to do, so I, I you know, you don't want to add more work to everyone, but... Um, this brings up a question that, I mean, there are going to be people who it, like, this is, they're very new to contributing. And I'm wondering if there's, if there's a way to have core team members, just like maybe look at like one patch and be like, kind of give reassurance that yes, you're less, yes, you're doing this right before people have to th actually put it up on the develop list and, and submit their, their patches formally. Um, kind of like a, you know, an easy intro or, or, you know, kind of a reassurance. Um, do you think there would be interest in, in any of the core team members and, you know, volunteering to do that? Or or is that, do you think there's too much work to do and people aren't going to be willing to do? So um, if you uh, want, uh, so if you publish, uh, write something to the public mailing list, so you can also mark it as uh, RFC. Uh, so request for comments when it, you say it's not uh, a real patch you want, just um, you don't want to get it applied, just, just comments if it's okay. But it's in the public, so um, everybody, so the core team members will look at, probably look at it, uh, but also others, and it's in the public. So if you want to have, um, yes, some people working for you, you can always ask for some uh, um contact us to help you so yes like i said some core developers are doing um, consulting work and on the other side you can also ask on the mailing list so i would suggest that you uh, write to the open wrt to the, to the hackers mailing list uh, what you what you actually want and um, yeah then we can figure out something All right, that sounds that sounds like the like the best plan forward then. Great, thanks for that. Um, all right. Well, the big things that I had were the uh, you know, I was going to talk about the um, uh, the testing, but uh, we kind of went through that already. Um, the other things uh, is I was at uh, Scale uh, last week, uh, the Southern California. Uh, Linux Expo, uh, speaking on um, the FCC topic um, on on my own. But uh, I, when I was there, I talked to some of the people on the yeah from Yocto about auto updating because I was more curious. Like, do they actually have any sort of auto updating feature or best practices or anything like that? Um, since this is a topic that we've kind of we've kind of discussed a little bit. Um, their best answer was was there's nothing right now. Um, they hear that they, they hear that peop some people might be working on it, but there's nothing really uh, public or, or firmed up as best I can tell. It's kind of more like you know hearsay and rumors that they're that they're hearing. Um, so it, it's possible that there might be some overlap between those two, but it's it's not for sure. Um, between, I mean, you know, having it work for Yocto and also working for OpenWRT. I mean, there are, there's, there may be some overlap. There may not be in how they go about doing it, um, if they do do it at all. Um, that was the big thing uh, related to that. Um, and the other thing, uh, you, you know, I, I, I talked about the FCC topic at scale and on my own, and that was well received. So um, it's a, uh, seems interested, people seem interested in it. So, well. Details with that. Do you have any new information on the FCC topic? That is all I had. Uh, so um, 
does anyone else have anything? Um, um, I, I, I will, I'll post my, um, my presentation and my, and they, they recorded it, but the, the best now is the FCC is still looking at this, at the topic. Um, while they do have that one rule that went to effect last year, they don't seem to be enforcing it as best we can tell. Um, and one of the problems right now is that the rules are really, really vague. Um, so it sounds like one thing that's going to happen is there somebody is trying to find a router manufacturer to submit a totally free uh, and open uh, router design to see if the FCC will accept that. Um, and and then obviously once they have confirmation either way, then then people would know how to move forward. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of movement from the FCC on this topic, so. Um, yeah, people are interested, but um, that's that's really about it on that. All right. Well, that's all I've got for this meeting. Anything else, folks would like to like to bring up? No, no thanks. I'm I'm good. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you, Anton. Not right now. <clears throat> awesome. Sounds good. Well, um, we will uh, we'll close it up then. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, look forward to seeing you again next week. And Paul, I, I look forward to uh, meeting your uh, your uh, uh, co-workers in India. Be great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Yep. Bye. Bye.